Hello, we'll be discussing the Supreme Court case between Lily Ledbetter versus Goodyear Tires. To start off the case, we will have Michelle explain the background of the court case. Um, Ledbetter versus Goodyear Tire case is about workplace discrimination claim under Title VII of Civil Rights Act of 1964. Um, Plaintiff Ledbetter is a retired employee from Goodyear Tire and she brought a lawsuit against her employee, employer because she was paid less than any of her colleagues um, and they're all male. Um, she claimed that um, she's got poor evaluations because of her gender and it resulted in less pay increase throughout her employment. Um, she alleged that her um, supervisors gave her um, unfair evaluation from 1979 to 1981 but it took her almost 20 years to um, file formal charges with Equal Employment Opportunity Commission um, established by Title VII. Um, the Title VII of Civil Rights Act of um, 1964 is a federal law that prohibits employers from discriminating against employees based on um, the gender, race, color, or religion. Um, however, employers cannot be sued under the law um, unless employee file a formal complaint within 180 days after the alleged unlawful practice happened. Um, jury and district court awarded her back pay and compensatory and punitive damages, but Court of Appeal reversed the verdict completely, holding that the pay discrimination is um, time barred. Um, it's because all pay decisions were made before 180-day charging period and plaintiff failed to show that she was the victim of the discrimination during the um, 180-day. Um, the Supreme Court affirmed the appellate court's decision because um, unlike plaintiff's claim, each paycheck does not trigger a new charging period, so her claim is untimely. Next, CY will um, discuss the appellant's argument. As it comes to this court, the only question that is presented here is whether Ledbetter is allowed to claim intentional discrimination in pay decision that occurred outside of the limitation period, and the answer to that is no such claim is recognizable, and this is supported by three factors. Factor number one, Ledbetter does not have a timely intentional pay discrimination claim because according to Section 706E of Title VII, employee has 180 days to file an intentional discrimination claim after unlawful employment practice occurred. Otherwise, employee will not be able to claim anything. This provision is created to prevent individuals from bringing an intentional discrimination claim concerning the lingering effects of decision that occurred during outside of the charge filing period. This is to protect court and defendants against stale claims and promotes conciliation rather than litigation. However, in this case, Ledbetter is complaining that discrimination made by different managers extending 19 years ago have lingering effects within the charge filing period. This is the exactly kind of stale claims that Section 706 establishes as untimely. Factor number two. Basemore versus Friday is not a contrary to this case because Basemore is a case that involved with present intentional discrimination pay. In that case, employer could not defend against those allegations. However, 706E was not even an issue in Basemore, and it is in this case. Moreover, the court did not find any present intentional pay discrimination. Factor number three, let better remaining argument are also in error. Ledbetter argues that numerous analogous context demonstrates that her claim should be considered timely, but the only relevant analogy that she identifies is the case under the National Labor Relations Act. Ledbetter also argues that she's receiving less pay because of her gender, but she started the same salary as all other male supervisors. In a number of years, she also received a larger percentage raises than her male co-workers. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, in all cases, the court has stressed that no deference is due to interpretation at odds with the plain language of the statute itself. Therefore, the court has not hesitated to reach conclusions that are contrary to other positions of the Court of Appeal and EEOC. For the reasons said above, the judgment of the court should be affirmed. Next, Sarah will talk about the appellee's brief. As mentioned er earlier, the initial lawsuit that Ledbetter filed was basically due to the fact that she was underpaid by almost $15,000 during her last year at Goodwill. Ledbetter's claim was made on the grounds of illegal pay discrimination based on sex. 
The initial argument was further based on Title VII, which deals with race and pay discrimination, and furthermore, she used the Equal Pay Act of 1963, which deals with abolishing wage, wage discrimination. In Ledbetter's brief of the USA Supreme Court, she relied on two main cases as evidence. She used the Bazemore versus Friday case, and she also used the National Railroad Passenger Corporation case versus Morgan. In both of those cases, it was found that an employer has a continuous obligation to reverse any effects of discriminatory pay decisions that have been made towards an employee. In the case of Bazemore, it was found that each discriminatory paycheck basically constitutes um, unlawful practice in violation with Title VII. Furthermore, in the case of Morgan, it was found that employee may challenge recurring violations with Title VII regardless of when they have, they have actually occurred. So again, time is not an issue. Flavor's brief uh, further argues that the 11th Circuit's ruling is at odds with what the Title VII stands for. She basically explained that if an employee misses their opportunity to file a claim that she has been, um, there has been discrimination in regards to her paycheck, she's basically out of luck, so therefore there's no recourse for her. Lebeter further argued that a 100-day limitation period is relatively short for any employee to be able to prove that there has been discrimina discrimination in regards to their pay. She argued that usually those happen in small increments and they're very hard to catch and monitor and therefore be brought in, uh, as evidence in court. Additionally, she noted that claims of pay discrimination are already limited by the doctrine of latches, which deals with making a legal claim in a timely manner and the statutory limits on back pay awards, which states that there's a two-year um, statute of limitation applied to back pay. Next, Aldrin is going to talk about the analysis and holdings of the court. So for the Supreme Court of the United States, they affirmed the judgment of the 11th Circuit to reverse Ledbetter's argument versus Goodyear. So the court rejected Ledbetter's argument that used the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 because this claim is time barred. For each discriminatory act, the employee must send the complaint to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission within the charging period of 180 days. And the paychecks are an effect of the payment system, thus not re-triggering that charging period. And Ledbetter's argument does not seriously contest the logic of past cases in regards to this law, like in Evans, Ricks, Lawrence, and Morgan. And then in Bazemore, the paycheck accrual rule that triggered the new EEOC charging period does not apply to Ledbetter due to her unsound interpretation of the law. For North Carolina Agricultural Extension Service in Bazemore, it had an inherently discriminatory pay structure, whilst Goodyear applied a system that was facially non-discriminatory and neutrally was applied. And the Equal Pay Act of 1963 is not weighted as the claim was dismissed by the district court. And then the EPA and Title VII are not the same as EPA does not require filing with the EEOC or proof of intentional discrimination. And though the Na National Labor Relations Act is relevant to serving as a model to Title VII, it cannot be applied to let better situation as it can only be charged if the payment relied through an earlier unfair labor practice. And to conclude the case, Nina will go ahead and explain the business, economic, and social significance of the court's decision in Ledbetter versus Goodyear. I will be talking about the business, economic, and social significance of the court's decision. To begin off with, the decision upsets a long-standing precedent. The new act states that 180-day statute of limitation for filing an equal pay lawsuit regarding pay discrimination result with each new paycheck affected by that discriminatory action. So each paycheck is now treated as a separate discriminatory act and that has a 180 day clock. Additionally, this law also addressed rights of women in workplaces. It also strongly suggested that employers that structure their compensation system to focus on in declining of incremental changes in compensation rather than compensation levels and many derive greatest benefit from this decision. Although this decision did undermine the congressional goal of eliminating discrimination in the workplace, it created incentives for employers to conceal the discriminatory conduct until the statutory 
statutory period has passed. This case, the Ledbetter case, also impacted politics quite a bit. In 2007, several Democratic members of the Congress introduced the Fair Payment Act. And the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act promotes voluntary compliance with employees, responds to workplace realities, allows employees to assess their validity of their claim, and it also restores long-standing law. The revision, revision of the law to states that if a present act of discrimination pertains prior acts outside of the 100 day, 180 day statute of limitation for pay discrimination can in, be incorporated into the claims. And finally, the bill was actually introduced in the 2008 presidential election campaign. Barack Obama actually supported the bill and Lily Ledbetter had the opportunity to appear in several campaign ads for the Obama campaign and had speaking roles at the Democratic National Convention. As you can see, this court case definitely influenced politics and different economics, it created a better opportunity for people who had discriminatory actions against them at the workplace. All in all, the su Supreme Court case, Ledbetter versus Goodyear, allowed a lot of employees to fight for their rights in workplaces and against workplace discrimination.